Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 10 Royal Navy battleship, the Thunder. We're on the map Northern Lights and as you can see, both teams have one CV. However, it's a tier 8 carrier. And both teams also have a destroyer. Now what's different today is that I am playing with a controller. Yes, with a controller. My Steam controller arrived yesterday and I played some matches with it, but I haven't really figured out exactly the best button configuration, so I'm still experimenting with it. And uh, I don't have much experience with controllers, I have to say. I have never owned a console and basically the only I've only been able to hold a controller in my hand maybe a handful of times in my entire life because, like I said, I've never owned one and... Uh, my friends didn't really have one either because uh, I am from a country that wasn't the wealthiest and uh, people simply didn't have money for such luxuries. We later ended up um, playing PC games instead. Which means that using a controller is kind of difficult. What makes matters worse is that apparently the Steam controller is uh, not the easiest thing to get used to and to make matters even worse is that World of Warships is not exactly a game that's controller friendly. Turns out that there are a lot of buttons that you need to press in this game and most of them you need to press very, very, very rarely. But you still need them sometimes. Oh and uh, I've only played one match with this current button configuration I believe. If any, actually. Maybe I've changed some buttons recently. Regardless, I'm basically, I'm pretty bad at this. However, I'll still try to make it work and, uh, you know, maybe it'll be fine to play with a controller like this. Some things that I've noticed that I'm really bad at is aiming takes a while for me. Like, with a mouse and keyboard, my aiming is significantly faster. I'm talking multiple times faster easily. And uh, I think my aiming is also less accurate. I seem to actually lead less than I do with um, mouse and keyboard for some reason, which I don't think is really something I can blame the controller on. It's just probably that I am busy trying to figure out which buttons I need to press to do the things I need to do to, and, you know, pay less attention to what I'm actually trying to aim at. And the other problem is that my control over my ship's movement uh, that is using the stick thingy, I think it's called joystick or no, 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 it's it's the analog stick. Basically using that to control my ship's heading and turning, etc. I seem to end up in situations where uh, <laughs> I just end up stopping kind of randomly sometimes because I just didn't pay attention to certain things while uh, trying to do other stuff trying to pay attention to other stuff. Another thing is that sometimes I seem to mix up buttons, like earlier right there, I wanted to go into the artillery view, you know, to basically zoom in, but I pressed the fire button. Luckily my guns were reloading at the time, so nothing happened, but I have fired my guns a few times when I didn't really intend to. And uh, that's not really a good thing, huh? Like, imagine you're playing a destroyer, you're trying to be stealthy and then you accidentally just fire your guns. That's, uh, yeah. Not ideal. I've only really played battleships because they have fewer buttons that you really need to press and they need to fire much more rarely, which uh, makes them a much better option to play at the start. Oh yeah, right now I just press the fire button again when trying to zoom in. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Luckily the Thunderer is a very good ship. Initially I started out playing the Yamato, but Luckily, I realized the error of my ways rather quickly. You see, Yamato is not a good ship to play like this because Yamato requires angling a lot more because her uh, armor is not the greatest and her turret traverse is also slow, which means that it's not a very forgiving battleship. Something like a Thundera or a Kremlin is m a much better choice than that. Ooh, this was actually a very nice salvo. Now, in some aspects, the World of Warships is actually a very good choice for trying to play a PC game with a controller because, um, well, you see, it has aim assist, which uh, makes things a lot easier. Because you don't need, you know, your aim doesn't need to be as accurate as it does with uh, 
I don't know, like a shooting game or something. Even though I guess the World of Warships would technically probably be considered a shooting game, right? I mean, it's a slightly different type of shooting game, but kinda is a shooting game regardless, right? There are ships shooting me. I don't like it. Even though I'm a battleship. We're winning right now though, so I think things are going great. And I think we're gonna be winning harder as our Yamato and Tirpets make it make their way around the decap. Actually I, I just now I just fired my guns without really meaning to. I don't think I can fire over that anyway, so it, it's kinda meaningless. Oh no, actually some went over. And it was the front guns that went over, so actually firing there was really bad, because I basically halved my potential salvo. <sighs> also, some of the buttons that I need to press rarely, I just don't remember what they are. I, I know I actually bound them, but I, I'm not sure if I can actually remember to press them at the right time. Ooh, 5k on a Cleveland. I think that's a stock Cleveland too, right? Can't be a non-stock Cleveland. I can't really tell you how I feel about the Steam controller compared to other controllers either, because remember, I have don't have much experience, but I'm liking it actually. And I'm kinda surprised that there doesn't seem to be anything else that is well like the Steam controller for PC gaming. Because you would think that this might actually end up being somewhat popular. Like I know the Steam controller wasn't popular, but I mean a controller like this on the PC might actually be something that people could be interested in, I think. Yeah, we're definitely taking this decap here. And there's nothing the enemy can really do about this. And I, I suppose they could be able to take the A-cap soon. But I think they're kinda in trouble. Honestly, I'm pushing out here, but I think it's kind of a mistake. I probably should be heading back to the A-cap as well. So I'm gonna start actually going in that direction. Because look, the only target here is this Republic and perhaps the Kronstadt if she comes back, right? And she doesn't exactly have the most amount of HP, so I can't really deal much damage, can I? Yeah, the Kronstadt is low too, and Kronstadt's actually already running away, which is, I think, the smart choice, but... Well, for them anyway. For me, it's bad that they're running. And I think that's Republic gone. And there she goes. Another thing why Thunder is a good ship for this is that she's maneuverable. Her rudder is fairly fast, so if I forgot to if I forget to turn or something like that, it's not as big of a problem as it is if I were playing like some standard, more standard battleships. Because the Thunder has the legendary upgrade of the uh, Conqueror built-in, which in improves your rudder shift to well, basically. Uh, cruiser levels. Whoops. I think I'm gonna take a shot on this Amagi next. She seems kind of broadside. Ish. Probably fire AP at some point too. Because the AP on the Thunder is actually pretty good. But I don't know, right now the HE seems to be doing well, and we're talking about shooting battleships. I'm gonna sub targets to the Conqueror. Come on, game. Okay. And the uh, Amagi actually used damage control party, which is exactly why I didn't really want to fire on the Amagi. That's a disappointing salvo. 
Next up, we're gonna shoot Yamagi again, because she has used her Damacon and she's getting closer. Yes! More fires! I'm surprised nobody has shot me, actually. I'm really surprised nobody is shooting me, considering I am actually broadside on now. They do have a destroyer, so I probably do need to worry slightly about that, but not too much, I think. Okay, I think the Conqueror is actually looking at me now. Or not anymore, I guess. Ooh, six shells out of eight. That's very nice. I'm gonna swap the AP soon. Well, provided of course that this Conqueror doesn't keep turning in, which he is doing exactly right now. <sighs> wow, 11k damage. I mean, the Thunderer seems like it's so easy to play that you can even play it on a controller rather well. I've done 140k damage so far. Wow. I don't really even need to angle at this point because because uh, I have so much HP still left I'm gonna start healing oh Conqueror is actually replacing the ship good that means I can deal more damage to her let's go farm some damage on the Izumo wow she managed to not even get the citadel on me come on Conqueror that's not cool. Can't you, like, take a hint? Fine, we're gonna finish you off then. Goodbye, Conqueror. Double strike, even. Jesus! See? You should all play with a controller. Yeah, I know, I know. The game was rather... Uh, how do I put this? Very friendly to dealing damage this game for me. The enemy just kinda ignored me and I had some incredible fire chance. That's 14 fires. 14 fires. Moving the mouse slowly across the screen. 14 fires. And a double strike. Oh yeah, I should probably swap the AP at this point. Because there's a good chance I'm going to run into a Minotaur at some point here. Mm, actually, maybe not. 994 points yet. I, I guess not going to happen really, right? 7 versus 3. Not a chance. See? Thunder is so good that you can play it without, without a mouse and keyboard even. Double strike, wither, three ships sunk, 185k damage. What more could you ask for? I suppose you could also always ask for more damage, right? Look, I'm number one. I'm top of the board. That's how good I am with a controller, apparently. Wow, <laughs> 83k fire damage. Yeah, 14 fires is a lot. That is a lot. Well... Apparently, a controller is okay to play the Thunderer with. Thank you, little white mouse. Let's go over my uh, captain skills and uh, upgrades, I suppose. So first, priority target, obviously. Because you should basically take this on every single ship uh, where you're gonna get shot at. Then expert marksman, especially with the special captain, because... Uh, Jack Dunkirk makes it three or one degree per second instead of, instead of 0.7, which is almost like a this is like a 45% increase, like boost from the special captain to a standard one. This actually makes turret traverse on the Thunderer pretty good. Combine that with the built in legendary upgrade. 
Obviously, then you go superintendent. You should take this on every single ship that has a heal. Then you go concealment expert because, well, Thunder uh, doesn't need to take the legendary upgrade, so she still gets the concealment upgrade, which makes her concealment really, really good for a tier 10 battleship. After that, obviously, you want uh, fire prevention, basics of survivability, and obviously, adrenaline rush. I suppose if you could, something like jack of all trades, especially with a special captain, would be nice, but considering you don't have the points, it's not really that great of an option, I think. If you were using a Conqueror instead of a Thunderer, maybe you could drop basics of survivability or something and take uh, jack of all trades or something like that, because, uh, because the Conqueror has a super heal, the Thunderer doesn't. So on the uh, Conqueror, it would be less of a downside. In terms of upgrades, it's fairly standard. I use the aiming systems upgrade, but honestly, AA guns is pretty much the same. Like, they're both minor increases. Um, upgrades such as damage control system modification 2 and 1 uh, are much more important. And the most important one is probably this concealment one. And then obviously it's reload, because you don't really need range, and your secondaries aren't exactly amazing on the ship anyway. Even if they were, the armor scheme on the Thunder and the Conqueror is not good enough that you don't really want to be close. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Kablamo, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.